Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the Balance Bond Podcast, Soul on Fire. I'm your host, Jordan Younger. And today we are here with the amazing JC Marie Smith. JC is a content creator. She's basically a content queen. She is on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. She has a podcast, a blog. She's a photographer. She does it all. She is somebody who I've followed for a really long time. We discovered when she was over, I think I found her because of her presets. She's been making presets for her photography for a long time and she's so talented at it. If you've seen her Instagram, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. It's so aesthetic and vibey and adorable. Oop, I have a Hudson on my back. Hudson loved her, by the way. So when animals love a human that's at your house, you just know they have good energy. And JC has incredible energy. We had so much fun. I was so happy to have her on. And I also just wanted to thank all of you guys for being here. This is episode 202. And you know, I've been in my feelings and my emotions for the last few episodes because they have been such milestones from episode 200, which is obviously a milestone to 201, which is a very TBB milestone because that is my lucky number, my angel number and episode 202. And I just feel so fortunate to get to interview and talk to such cool people. Like I said in the intro of my 200th episode, Joe Rogan, huge podcaster, he said it took him about 500 episodes to be comfortable podcasting. And I can relate. I look back on some of my older episodes and I just think I have come so far. We come so far as interviewers and conversationalists and the things that we've learned. And honestly, I just feel so lucky to get to talk to people who inspire me. You'll see in this episode, I have been following JC for a long time, like I mentioned. And it's just so amazing how the world comes around and to get to talk to people who inspire you and to also share them with you guys is just such a gift. So feel very lucky and I'm so grateful that you're all here. If you feel inspired to rate and review the podcast on iTunes, I will send you a free gift, which is my yoga ebook. So send me a screenshot of your rating and review to jordan at thebalancebond.com and I will send you that free gift. That would mean so much to me. Also tag us on Instagram when you listen. It's such a fun way to connect with you guys and to repost you and to chat with you and to get to kind of put faces to all of your names. That's always so fun. So please continue to do that. Tag me, tag JC, and we can see who's listening and connect with you guys. Tell us what your favorite part of the episode is, all that good stuff. And yeah, I won't tell you too much about what we talked about in this episode because we'll just dive right into it. I loved talking about JC's marriage, her religion. She grew up Mormon. I think she's the first person I've ever had on the podcast to talk about Mormonism specifically. And I'm so fascinated by all religions. So that was such a cool conversation. We talk about spirituality. We talk about burnout. We talk about taking time off of our phones, blogging, content creating. We get into a lot of fun topics and you can check out JC on her podcast, the What We Said podcast, and on her Instagram. And we will share all of those places with you. Before we get into the episode, let's talk a little bit about CBD. So CBD is something that I've been taking for a long time for anxiety, for insomnia, for joint pain, for pain of all kinds, obviously because of Lyme and lifelong insomnia that comes along with Lyme. I need a lot of help in the relaxation department and in the pain relief department. So I love Cured Nutrition for all things CBD. Cured Nutrition is the brand that I have found that is my tried and true go-to for all things CBD. So just in case you're wondering, CBD does not get you high. There's no THC in it whatsoever. All it does is relax you, takes pain away, makes you feel amazing, and Cured Nutrition in particular is a nature-based formula that is designed to help you take life to its ultimate potential. I'm so, so, so obsessed with all things Cured Nutrition. My favorite products, just because everybody always asks when I talk about it, what products do I take from Cured Nutrition? I take usually their mint tincture. 
I take their Cured Zen, which I take at night. It is for relaxation and for sleep. It is THC-free. It's gluten-free and vegan, all natural. And the ingredients in it are super minimal um, ingredients that you can always trust. There is reishi, magnesium, valerian root, CBD, of course, ashwagandha, passion flower, and just a couple other things. So ashwagandha is something that is also sometimes taken for Lyme and for alleviation of just a lot of different issues and pain. So I highly recommend that product. I also love their Cured Aura, which is for focus. I usually take it in the morning. It's like a nootropic. It's incredible. And I love their CBD hemp infused pain salve. So in the pain salve, it's like shea butter. It kind of has this like minty feel. I use it every single night on my jaw and on my hands. I gave it to my dad for his arthritis. We are such fans. So you can use the code blonde for a discount with Cured Nutrition. It is incredible. If you want to hear the founder talking all about CBD and Cured Nutrition, you can head to my episode with Joseph Sheehy, where we talk all about CBD, mental health, overcoming some of his own obstacles in life, living in Colorado, and how he keeps the brand close to home. It's so cool. Like their products are so local to Colorado, but they are sold worldwide, which is so exciting. So check out that episode. Also shop curednutrition.com code blonde for a discount. That is B-L-O-N-D-E. Tag me in your Instagrams when you try Cured Nutrition. I know you guys are going to fall in love. Now let's get into this episode with JC. Okay, JC, I'm so happy that you're here. I am so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. Of course. I've been following you for so long. I have been such a fan of your content forever. I'm trying to remember where I originally found you. It was either on YouTube or potentially with your presets. I've been using your presets forever. So there was definitely a period of time where my photos were looking like yours because I was using your presets all the time. Wow. I did not know that. Yeah. And I still use them, of course, but with Lightroom and things, I think I have to update the app on my phone or else I would still be using them all the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you are such a talented content creator in all ways, preset maker, photographer, blogger, all of the things. So tell us a little bit about you and how you got started. Thank you. First of all, that's so kind. I'm JC. I'm 25 years old. I'm originally from Phoenix, Arizona, and I live in LA currently with my husband, Leif, and our little red toy poodle lady. She's the cutest She's little so dog cute. in the world. She's so cute. And um, hmm, I'm a lifestyle content creator. I am a podcaster. We just talked about this. I've been mm-hmm. podcasting for two years. I am so obsessed with podcasts and everything about it. Um, and I do YouTube here and there, TikTok. You know, I just make a lot of a lot of random content and I absolutely love creating. I love photography. That's how I started out as as a photographer, which is probably how you did find my presets and everything because that's been my passion since I was in high school. So um, I absolutely love creating in all things, just artistic and photography and all of that. Yes, you do have a fun TikTok. I like your TikTok. (laughs) Thank you. I've gotten some good ideas from your TikTok, marriage videos and different things like that. Yes. So you're just a content creator across the board. Across the board. Which is a very, I think people underestimate how hard that is to be a content creator of not just one medium, like podcasting or Instagram. You're all over the place with all the different platforms. There's video editing, there's you do a lot of like day in the life vlogs, Mm -hmm. vlogs with a V. So what, do you have a favorite medium? Oh gosh. At the moment, I think it is TikTok and maybe it's just because it's the most new. So it's the most exciting at the moment, I think. And the algorithm on TikTok, I feel like allows you to grow and is just really, it's a lot different than Instagram and YouTube. I, I, feel as though it's similar to how Instagram and YouTube used to be. Totally. And so maybe that's why it's just fun and exciting right now. But I love TikTok. I think it's so fun to make video content. And there's so many, I mean, with every medium, there's so many, you know, different types of content you can go into. And I just love on TikTok. I don't know if you've seen, I know everyone's for you page is very different, but 
there are plastic surgeons on there. There are dentists. There are people who do like holistic health stuff. There are people who do comedy. I just feel like there's so many different types of TikToks and it's just like the sky's the limit. So That's so true. I'm loving it. I love that about TikTok too. But you know what's interesting? So I was loving that about TikTok at first, just the ability to grow and the algorithm so different. You could post something and get hundreds of thousands of views just randomly. And I feel like something happened with my TikTok in particular where that just stopped happening. You know, I've heard a lot of people say that. I actually feel similar. I feel like Mine were doing really well and then it kind of just hit a plateau. But then I feel like if you are really consistent, some the random ones will just grow. That if you're sense. if you're very consistent, because I've had times like that too, where I'm thinking, okay, now I did the algorithm switch or something, because now my videos didn't get that many views. And then randomly one will get like half a million views. That's like, amazing. Heck. So yeah. And you have a lot of people following you on there. Yeah. It's actually so crazy. So one of my videos, my like love story with my husband went viral and got 11 million views. That's so cool. And I gained, I think, 200,000 followers from it. Oh my God. So how many people are following you on TikTok now? Almost 400,000. I have as many TikTok followers as I do Instagram now. That's incredible. Insane. I could have never imagined that. Do you feel like it's the same people or different people? Like a totally different 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 audience? I mean, for sure. Some of them definitely cross over, but I feel like a lot of them are just new that found me on TikTok. That's so fun. It's really cool. So do you upload like every day? I haven't been that consistent the past two weeks, but Most of the time, yeah, I'll upload like every day. With TikTok, I feel like there's less pressure. So I'm not super... With all my other platforms, I don't want to say I'm more calculated, but I have to plan. Otherwise, I would just be overwhelmed with too much to do. But with TikTok, I feel like I keep it very casual and I just kind of film some stuff in the moment. So it allows me to be a little bit more just creative and random with it. Um... And I don't have certain, I'm not like, I have to post every single day. So I'm not as, but that being said, I feel like I'm almost more consistent because of that. Because Because it's more fun. Because there's less curation. That's what I find with TikTok. It's just, it's nice to take that pressure off Mm -hmm. with the curation versus Instagram, which we can totally get into. Yeah. But before we do, I want to hear more about you growing up in Arizona. What was, what was your childhood like? Okay. My childhood was good. It was great. Nothing to complain about. Um, My parents got divorced when I was really young. I think I was like four years old. And then my mom got remarried a little while after that. And so my stepdad and my mom raised me, had a great childhood. Um, We moved around a lot growing up just because like my dad's jobs and stuff like that. So I got very acquainted to moving around and meeting new people 24-7. And I feel like that kind of molded me into a pretty outgoing person. Um, and I have two little brothers. They, my The one that's right under me is like seven years younger than me. So there's a pretty big gap between us. Um, one of them's still in high school. One of them graduated last year. And yeah, growing up in Arizona... Fun, great, super hot there. Um, this past week in LA, I was just telling Jordan was literally 115 degrees, and I forgot what that feels like. I feel like it might even be worse here because it's more humid, it's yeah, more dry in Arizona. Mm-hmm. But and the smoke lately, yes, the, the air. smoke is not not a vibe. But no. um, yeah, I like I love Arizona. I really do. I it took me moving away to appreciate it more. I was so excited to get out of Arizona when I got married. I was like, let's get the heck out of here. I've lived here my whole life and I am obsessed with California. I feel like with the weather and everything, you really can't beat it. But I do find myself loving visiting Arizona because I just, I love it. And I love my family being there. My husband's family is there as well. So I don't know if we'll move back eventually, but maybe. Yeah, I was going to ask you if you could see yourself staying in LA and raising a family here. Yeah, I don't know about LA specifically, I could, but maybe honestly, I, I love LA way more than I thought I would. We lived in Orange County before and I was like, I don't want to move to LA. Cause whenever I went to LA, I was just in the city for meetings and stuff. You know what I mean? And I was just like, I don't like that vibe. I'm more of a, I don't know. I don't like big cities as much, but even where we live in LA doesn't feel like LA. To me. Right. I know. When because you live in more of like a neighborhoody place, mm-hmm. more suburban. Yes. I think I can definitely see people raising a family there totally. more so than here. 
Although there's tons of families around here, but I don't know if I could imagine doing that. So yeah, that's interesting. So how did you meet your husband? So we met on a blind date. um, And my childhood friend that I've known for since I was in like fifth grade, she is married to Leif, my husband's brother. So she's the one who set us up on a blind date. And I actually really did not want to go. I didn't even know what he looked like. It was truly a blind date. I'm like, I don't know. I don't know who, what he looks like. I hadn't talked to her. We were friends, but we hadn't like seen each other or hung out in a long time. And she randomly, that's how I know it's fate is because she randomly called me and she's like, I want to set you up with my brother-in-law. And I was like, what? Like, no, I don't want to do that. How old were you? 19, 20. I got married when I was 21. Okay. So um, anyway, and yeah, she set us up and we like totally clicked. And I, on our first date, I was like, oh, I'm going to marry this guy. But I was just like, oh my gosh, we get along so well. He's so fun. And our sense of humor is really aligned. Like it's going to be really fun to hang out with him again. And then on our second date, I was like, wait, yeah, I like love this guy. He's so fun. And then we just totally clicked and hit it off. And then we got engaged like six months later and married six months after that. So we knew each other for like a year before we... Wow. So that was pretty fast. It was really fast. Yeah. That's amazing. So is that faster than you would have thought you would have gotten married before you met him? Yes. It's in our community. It was actually very... It is very common to get married young and get married fast. Um, Mostly because everyone's like Mormon or Christian. Not everyone, but a lot of people are Mormon or Christian. And you know, you're like waiting to have sex till you're married and stuff like that. So it just moves quickly for the most part. But that being said, I've always been very career driven. And like, I I haven't ever been that girl that's like, oh, I just want to get married and have babies right away. Like I had a lot of friends that were like that. And I was like, I don't want to do that right off the bat. Like I want to travel and I want to like, you know, reach my career goals. So I had this weird, I kind of thought that I wouldn't get married till a little bit later in life and definitely not that fast because it also blew my mind that people could get married that fast. I'm like, you don't even know them. Right. And then once I met Leif and we just hit it off, I felt like, oh, I, just, I kind of understand now because I, we're just so in love and obsessed and we all, I feel like I know him. I've known him forever. And so it didn't even feel fast, you know? It felt like it couldn't happen fast enough almost. And um, yeah. So it's been really good. No regrets. I do. I always say, I look back and I'm like, we were so young. Like I didn't know anything. Totally. But also, oh my gosh. When I was 19, 20, 21, I can't even tell you who, what I was doing. I mean, thank God I didn't marry the people that I was dating at that time. Like my boyfriend from that time in my life. But I also knew that about myself. And mm-hmm. I didn't, like I was telling you, I didn't grow up in a religious community So at the time, I really didn't know anybody who was getting married at that young age unless they were just pregnant and then they got married. So it wasn't something that people that I knew were doing. My dad actually got married when he was 19 to his girlfriend who, well, wife who was 17 and had three kids and had kind of this whole life and then met my mom in his 30s after he was divorced. And then it was my mom's first marriage. They had me. So he always had a rule that was no, none of his kids could get married until they were 30. Okay. And none of us actually waited until we were 30, yeah. but we found that kind of middle ground. But I think it's so cool. I mean, clearly you guys are soulmates. You're meant to be. Yes. I and see your videos. He seems like such a great guy. He, he is the best guy. And it's so interesting because I actually, I have had friends and I've had a lot of people who have gotten married young as well and like gotten divorced already or like figured out that it wasn't for them. And um, I don't know. I think it can be dangerous to get married young. Um, and it just, I don't know. It works out for some people and it doesn't for some people. And I feel really lucky that Leif and I found each other at such a young age. And I'm so grateful. We've almost been married for five years already. And like, we've traveled the world together and done all of the things that I wanted to do alone, but we've done it together, which I yeah, think has been so really, cool. yeah, really special. Um, yeah, so far so good. So <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Do you feel like you guys are like old souls or that you're an old soul or you're just like truly young and married and all the things? I don't know. I don't know about that actually. I feel like in a way I've always been, I don't want to say, I don't know if it's an old soul or wise. Like I, I feel that I've always been wise and I've always 
been very uh, self-aware. Like I feel like I know what's right and what's wrong for me personally. I've always had a very good sense of that. And so even when I was dating people in the past, it was always just kind of like, eh, like you were saying, you knew that about yourself. Like I never was like, I'm going to marry this person. It was always kind of like, yeah, it's fun. <laughs> but then when I met Leif, I felt like a sense of knowing where I was right. like, this is safe. This is home. This is right. Mm-hmm. And so, and I feel like he felt feels the same about me. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, you can tell seeing you guys together. It's Aww, just you guys you. play off of each other. It feels like you guys are so different from each other in the best way. Thank you. We are. We are. We balance each other out for sure. Yeah, yeah. I love that. So you grew up Mormon. I would love if you could tell us about that because I just am so fascinated. I grew up Jewish, but it wasn't a big part of my life. But I did have a bat mitzvah. <laughs> um, but other than that, yeah, I want to hear all about growing up in that way and you're still in the church and things. So I want to hear all about it. Yeah. Okay. Wow. It's like, where do I even begin with this? It's so funny because I feel like a lot of people are so fascinated by this, especially if they didn't grow up around Mormon communities. Where I grew up in Gilbert, Arizona, it was so common to be Mormon. So I was surrounded by tons of Mormons. Never felt like that was a weird, you know, like Mm -hmm. I didn't ever feel different basically for being Mormon. But basically Mormons believe that we're Christian. So we believe that Jesus Christ is our savior. And, you know, there's lots of other stuff as far as the doctrine goes. Um, I, it's, my journey with spirituality and religion has been interesting. I grew up, my parents have never been super uh, controlling or conservative where it's like, you have to do this in this way and wear this. And I have friends who grew up that way that are Mormon or Christian. And for that, I'm really grateful. I feel like my parents really gave me room to kind of do what I want. And they always trusted that I would, you know, make good decisions and be a kind, good person. So I'm really grateful for the way that they raised me um, because it wasn't as strict as a lot of other people I know. And with my personality, I'm very independent and I like to figure things out on my own. And I've, I never even really went through a rebellious stage growing up or anything, but I just like to do my own thing and I like to figure out things for me. And when, you know, after I got married, I feel like I kind of went through this little phase where I was like, what do I even believe in? Like, have I just been kind of going along with this because that's how I was raised and like everyone around me was Mormon. So it's like, do I even really know this for myself or am I just going along with, you know, rolling with the punches? And, um, Leif has been super supportive of me throughout just this whole journey. And he feels similar in a lot of ways. It's like, I don't know. Sometimes when you grow up with something since you're born, you just, you don't have a testimony of it on your own. You kind of just, that's all you know. And so I did a lot of, you know, like searching and I feel like I always just go with what feels right in my gut. And um, the way I live my life now, I never like to say that I, you know, I take my own spin on it because it's not supposed to be like disrespectful in any way where I'm like, I choose what, you know, how this religion goes. But I feel like a lot of people within Christianity or Mormonism, they think of it as black and white. It's like, you're either 100% in or you're 100% out. And I really just disagree with that because I think that, no one, life is never black and white because we're not perfect and we're, you know. So I kind of live life and take the things that I absolutely love about the gospel that bring me a lot of peace and happiness and comfort. And some of the parts that I just can't get behind or that I'm just like, "Eh, I don't know about that. I, you know, don't agree with and I don't try and make myself agree with it. Yeah, that makes so much sense. So in terms of like drinking coffee and things like that, mm-hmm. do you drink coffee? I do not drink coffee. Um, definitely don't care at all if other people right. do. <laughs> uh, I actually just really hate the taste of it. So I, I tasted a drink of it once and I'm just like, not worth trying not to get you. past the past. Yeah, You're a matcha trying. person, right? Yeah, I love matcha. I love chai. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, not a coffee drinker. And like, I don't drink alcohol either, which is a part of... Um, Mormonism, I guess, like most people don't drink. 
And that is something I grew up with, but I also just am totally fine without it that I just don't care to. Um, And yeah, I just try and listen to myself and like my intuition and what feels good and right to me. And truthfully, I think that the most harmful thing, and I've received a lot of judgment. So that's especially why I'm so, you know, I don't want to judge other people. Um, So I just, I don't care at all what other people do. Like they can do whatever works for them. And that alone has brought me so much more peace and happiness is just being okay with how, how people just want to live their life. Because I feel like in the community I grew up in, a lot of people were not okay with how other people lived their lives. And it always just felt so like, just not good to me. That makes sense. I know. I feel like living a non-judgmental life is the way to be, the way to go. I mean, not the way to be because people can do whatever they want. Right. But it's a happy way to live life. Definitely. And I definitely resonate with that so much. I think when you're worrying about other people and what they're doing, you're just wasting precious energy that you could be bettering yourself and being kind and like, like you said, living a happy life. It just... And not to say I'm perfect, of course, like I still have my moments where I judge or, you know, but you're right. It just, it never brings happiness. So I try really hard to just be as loving and non-judgmental as possible. I love that. So what's your relationship with spirituality in terms of like, I'm into some very spiritual things Mm -hmm. that are like um, talking to mediums and channeling Mm -hmm. and that kind of stuff. What is your take on, what's your spiritual practice? Okay. So I I have never done any of that sort of stuff. Um, I believe in God and like I pray, um, you know, I, I, I pray a lot of gratitude prayers just to, I feel like that helps my mindset a lot and my similar to gratitude journaling or anything like that, just like thanking God for everything that I have and, um, asking for things as well and asking for like opportunities to serve others. And like, um, I, I feel like my spirituality, the thing is, is I've said this before. It's like when things are going good in your life, it's easy to forget about the spiritual side of you because you feel like you don't really need help. You're just like, Oh, things are going good. And then at least for me and my experience. And then when something goes wrong, then I'm like, you know, rely on God more. Cause I'm just like, Oh, I just like need comfort. I need peace. So I admit that I still, I still get like that a lot. And what I'm trying to do as far as my spiritual practices go and my relationship with God is, you know, um, basically just keep those practices going, whether things are going good or they're going bad to keep that sense of gratitude and humility and like happiness in my life and like connection. That's such a good tip. I know. I think that that's something a lot of us do is just fall back on those practices when things are not going well. But I think when things are going well and you can maintain those practices, your life could just get exponentially better. For sure. And the gratitude, gratitude is huge. Mm -hmm. Gratitude, no matter what your religion is or if you're not religious, everybody should have a gratitude practice. I 100% agree. It's like, I've, I've always heard people, gratitude journal, you know, say three things you're grateful for. And I'm like, yada, yada. And then once I started doing it, I'm like, oh, this totally right? flips my mood around. Like I yes. could be having the worst day. And then I, you know, say a prayer or write down some things I'm grateful for, you know, truly things that I'm like so deeply grateful for. And I feel instantly mm-hmm. just like my mood is boosted. Yeah. You attract the energy that you're focusing on. Mm-hmm. I love it. Absolutely. That's great. So you moved to LA with your husband. You got married, 21. How did you get into the social media business? So I have been doing photography, like I said, since high school. That was always my reputation in high school. I was obsessed with photography, took everyone's senior photos, family photos, wedding photos. I was so obsessed. I started my Instagram, I believe, when I was in oh gosh, I think I was a junior in high school when I started my Instagram. And I just started posting, you know, random photos of me and my friends doing whatever. We would do photo shoots constantly. I would post all about the photo shoots. People would always ask me, how the heck are you getting that photo on your phone? Like, cause it would be from a camera and I would, 
email it to myself and then save it to my phone. And this is like back in the dinosaur ages of Instagram. And so people um, were always, yeah, curious about that. But I started posting a bunch of my photography and I started gaining a following. And in high school, it was small. I didn't even hit 10,000 followers until after I graduated high school. But I remember that was a huge milestone for me. I was like, oh my gosh, 10,000 people? Like, what the heck is going on? This is crazy. And the reason I was sticking to it so much, first of all, is because I was obsessed with photography, but also because I started to understand that that was a way of marketing. So a lot of people started finding me through Instagram through word of mouth of people tagging me and, you know, this is who took my photo. And then they would find me and hire me. I'm like, this is such an amazing way to market my business. So I just kept going and again, was just obsessed with it. I'm talking like I would wake up on the weekends at 5 a.m. and like do sunrise photo shoots and then also do a sunset photo shoot. I was just so into it. So I was posting constantly I made some trip, trips out to LA to shoot models and do fashion photography and stuff. And then basically when I started dating Leif is more when I started showing more of my life as well. And it really started surprising me because a lot of people were like resonating with that and engaging with that content even more than my photography, which I didn't expect. And, you know, I would go on trips and show my trips and that would do, that would get the best engagement. People would be so much more into it. And I was like, oh, that's interesting. So I started a separate account for my photography and I started posting more of my life on my my Instagram. And that's really when it started like taking off even more. And again, this was years ago. So I feel like Instagram, it was a lot easier to grow on Instagram. Um, but we started traveling. And then when Leif and I got married, we started a YouTube channel. Actually, a little while after we got married, we started the YouTube. But um, yeah, we just started posting our life. And that's kind of how I transitioned into becoming a lifestyle influencer. Because then instead of making money off of photo shoots, brands started reaching out to me, but, you know, being like, oh, we'll pay you this to promote on your your channels and stuff. And so, yeah, it just kind of started becoming that. That's so cool. So that was never your intention. No. Your intention was to grow your photography business. Mm-hmm. You were doing wedding photography and mm-hmm. stuff. I mean, I followed you like for a long time and I'm remembering these like beautiful wedding photos that oh, you would take. Oh, so nice. It's, I know, it's so cool. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and so you organically became a blogger, influencer. So was that a surprise to you? Yeah, it really was. I remember when I started posting more of my life and again, that would get higher engagement. I was, I was actually so surprised. I'm like, what? I thought people followed me for my photography and it still was photography. It was just, you know, I was in a lot of the photos and I was traveling and showing these places I was going and stuff. Um, and yeah, it did surprise me. And I think sometimes it's the things that you don't try that just you know, you're not really putting that much effort in. You're just genuinely doing something you love. And that's why it works so well. I think so too. I think anytime there's too much emphasis on creating a career out of your passion, I think it really loses some magic. And of course, you know, now this is your career and I totally get that. And so you have to keep finding the passion. And I love what you've been doing lately. You posted that thing about posting for the sake of posting or not thinking too hard Mm -hmm. and just like posting content that you love that might not be the type of content that gets all the likes and that kind of stuff, but it's so fulfilling Mm -hmm. for the passion. Yeah. And it's so, it's exactly what you said when something you love turns into a full-time job and all of a sudden there's a have to in front of it. I have to film this video for this brand. I have to shoot these photos for this and it's due on this day it does lose some of the magic and it feels more like a chore instead of something that you just absolutely love to do. And it really is a fine line. Like you have to walk this line of, I don't know, you still want to put passion and love into your work while you also have deadlines and things you have to do for money. And it actually can be really hard sometimes. And I think a lot of people, I was just talking to Chelsea about this, A lot of people do think that influencing is a dream job and I am so grateful and blessed to do what I love. I truly like, there's nothing I'm more passionate about is like finding what you love and doing that. But you do have to find ways to stay passionate about it or it's easy to get burned out or just 
not obsessed with it anymore. For sure. Burnout definitely happens. And it doesn't mean that you don't like what you're doing anymore. It just means you have to pivot and Mm -hmm. kind of rethink the way that you're doing things, which I've definitely experienced many times over the last many years of creating content, blogging, podcasting. So what do you think about pivoting and all that? Yes, you have to pivot. And that's why, again, I think I'm loving TikTok because I'm like, oh, it's something new that, you know, brings me a little more creative. My creative juices are flowing more with it because I've never done that sort of content. And it can get monotonous when you're just doing the same thing over and over every day. And it's hard, especially in today, you know, today's climate when there is a lot going on and it's like, you're still expected to be on your game. So creative, so inspired, so excited and happy every single day. And you're just like, it's a lot. It's a lot. It can be a lot. For sure. For sure. So was your husband immediately up for like the vlogging and being a part of this with you? Or was he kind of like more private? So I wouldn't call him shy but I wouldn't call him outgoing and like, he's not, you know, wanted to be a YouTuber his whole life. Let's Mm -hmm. put it that way. (laughs) Um, He, so we started out working together with him doing, he does a lot of filmmaking and video stuff and he's really good at it. Um, Actually didn't know that until we were engaged. He did, he had a completely other job. And then he, he, you know, expressed interest in filmmaking and he filmed my best friend's wedding and it was so amazing. And I'm like, you should do that as a job. Like you're so good at it and you love it. And so he started doing that. And, um, so that's how we started working together. When I started YouTube, he was up for it, but he wasn't like, yeah, I want to be front and center in the vlogs. He's like, yeah, you could do YouTube. I'll be in, I'll be in some of them. I'll be in the background. You know, he's always been so supportive of anything, any idea I have. He's like, let's do it. Like he's, He's very go with the flow. Um, he's kind of, it's funny because he is more reserved, but he's kind of become like a character in my vlogs where people are like, more life, more life. Like he's just a funny guy and he's the, he's just the best. So people love seeing him, but he's also not someone who is ever, ever demands attention. He doesn't, he is, has a quiet confidence. That's why I've always loved him in the first place. He's like totally good to just sit there. He doesn't need any attention but he really is so funny and fun. And so I think our YouTube, our YouTube family gets more of a peek into what he's really like. Um, But yeah, he's always down for whatever. That's so cool. Yeah, (laughs) It's so nice to have that support when you're really documenting your life and recording so much of it. And I always like to ask people that question because it's so interesting. Like I met my husband, I mean, I had already been doing this for several years and he's much more private. So Mm -hmm. it took a lot for him to, he used to just be like, no, 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 I don't want to, he would be in pictures and stuff, Mm -hmm. but to really like share himself if we were ever going to do a podcast together or something has, has just something that he has gotten more comfortable with. Now I think he secretly loves it. Yeah. Oh, totally. And he loves to like make his little appearances in the back of videos. And, yes. And my dad too. Like they <laughs> kind of act like they hate it. But if my dad like you love this. me Instagram storying, he hops in and <laughs> he has like a, he will narrate the whole thing. It's I so love funny. it. I know. I totally respect people that are more private and it really does take a certain type of person, I think, to open themselves up to the public because there's always going to be, I don't know, you're opening yourself up to judgment and criticism sure. at times. And so I totally respect when like spouses are just like, I don't want to be in, you know, the spotlight or like in videos. I totally get it. But I know that is really funny you say that because I feel the same way about my family. Like when I'm around my family and I'm vlogging and it's like, everyone's like, I know. They secretly they want to be in there. Yeah, totally. My dad loves to be like, oh, don't film me. But then he'll hop in and be like, everyone should buy this almond milk because this, 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 and this. And he he like knows the exact 15 seconds to talk for. It is so funny. <laughs> that is hilarious. I love I that know. so much. I know. Um, so how do you deal with when you do get like that negativity or judgment? How do you deal with it? Um, you know, this year out of ever, I've always, I thought I've always understood the phrase, you can't please everyone. I've always known that. And I'm like, that's fine. Yeah, you can't please everyone. But I think truly this year I've internalized that. And I really understand that deeply now. And I'm able to let a lot of comments and things truly just out of my mind pretty immediately. Honestly, my approach is normally to just delete. Um, Like if someone sends me a rude DM. I don't give it any energy. I just delete it because I'm like, I don't, there's nothing to say or 
I don't need to defend myself. Um, I think when you are confident in yourself and you know who you are, those comments are much less likely to shake you. Um, but that being said, some things just hurt when you read them. And sometimes if I'm having a bad day and someone like recently, someone was like, you've gained a lot of weight, like in the past few months and like your arms look flabby and your face is whatever. And like it, I was having, I was having a really hard day and I was like, that like actually hurts me. Like that is so mean and like rude. (laughs) And after a day I'm over it, but it's like, I totally have my moments where I'm a human and that hurts my feelings, but I try to not give it any of my energy at all because it really, if you know who you are and these random people on the internet are making assumptions or making judgments, their opinion really does not matter in your, you know, in your reality. For sure. If you don't let it. For sure. Yeah. I love that approach. No energy, block and delete. Mm -hmm. Don't answer. Don't Mm -hmm. engage. Totally. And I, and I feel like that's, those people, especially when they're actually being really mean, they want a reaction out of you and they want a response. And so I think the best thing you can do is just not give them anything. You are so right. They want a response. Mm-hmm. I I got, I never respond, but if I'm in a really weird mood, sometimes mm-hmm. I'll respond, Same. which I did yesterday. Oh no. Because <laughs> it was just this silly thing. It was like, what did the person even say? It just didn't have anything to do with what I had actually written. Um, somebody just made this weird comment about like money and Instagram or something. And I was just like, oh, it looks like you missed the point of my caption. And he's like, and that's my fault. Why? Like goes oh, off. And you're and just like, like why did I even this? say anything? I know. I'm like, oh my God, I should have learned my lesson to never engage with yeah. somebody who's looking to have an argument. Someone who doesn't have a profile picture. Like right. they're on the internet to be a troll. Yeah. And they're not trying to understand you. So there's no... There's no sense in arguing, especially when they are, yeah, just a random person on the internet. It's like, I'm going to take my absolute best friends and my family's opinions to heart. And that's about it. Right? I know. I love that. There's a quote that says, do not let the people who know you the least, do not let their opinions be the loudest. Totally. people who know you the most, those are the only opinions that matter. And every time I remember that, it is so comforting. Like, go ask your husband, your mom, your friends how they view you, mm-hmm. and you will be so happy. Oh, for Hudson sure. Came to say hi. Oh, he's or, is it a boy or girl? He's a boy. Oh my gosh, he's so cute. Are you okay with cats? Yeah, I actually am allergic, but not unless I like touch my face. Okay, well, he's a little angel. Hi, a lot of people cutie. who are allergic are actually fine around him oh. for whatever reason. Wait, I love him. He loves you. Oh Reason- my god, he's fully licking you. He probably smells your dog. Do you smell lady? Squeaky Hi, man. So cute. He's such a perfect boy. Oh my gosh, he's really cute. I I've know. like never been a cat person until actually recently. A few of my friends have cats and I'm like, they're actually so cute. They're sweet wonderful. And cute. Okay, so I had never been a cat person either. And I had actually never had an animal, but I loved dogs. And I just didn't really understand cats. And then five years ago, I was living in a building, the building I was talking to you about that was close to here. And we could have cats, but not dogs. So I just got all inspired and got a kitten, him. Oh. And we are so close. The bond is insane. And cats are extremely special. They're very smart. They're very intuitive. Yeah. Like if you're sad, he'll like lay on your chest and purr. Oh, and he's so sweet They're super independent, which makes life easy. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Wow. It's so fun. I might have been converted. I know. <laughs> Honey will convert people for sure. Um, so what have been some of the biggest hurdles with blogging and podcasting and being an influencer for a living? I think one of the biggest things is how interconnected it is with my real life. Um, it can actually feel really toxic how just connected everything is. So you know, I, it's trying to find that balance of sharing, you know, and, and being connected with your audience, but not being attached to your phone literally all day, every day. And that's been something I've been trying to figure out recently because I, it's like, I'm trying to figure out how to not be so emotionally attached to my device at all times, but also stay connected with everyone. And, you know, 
be close with my community. And that's been a huge thing because I'm really trying to break my addiction to my phone. I feel like I reach for it constantly. I'm always going to the Instagram app for no apparent reason. If I'm in line at the grocery store, I'm on my phone and I'm just like really trying to stop doing that because I feel like it, I just miss out on so much by being on my phone. And I was in Montana actually this summer and I was rarely on my phone. And I told my husband, I'm like, I've never been happier. Like when I was in Montana, maybe it's because I was traveling for the first time in months and it's so beautiful there, but I felt so present and just happy. And I think a big part of that was that I was not on my phone that much at all. And so that for me has been a little thing that I'm trying to work through right now is not being so addicted and attached. Um, And also growth has been something that's been hard for me on Instagram for the past like two years. And it's so interesting because, you know, influencing and with this job can sometimes feel if you let it like your paycheck relies on how many people like you and think you're cool and interesting. And especially if that number starts to go down physically, like the actual number is not growing or it's stagnant or it's going downhill, you literally start to feel like that's your self-worth just plummeting. Like, oh, people don't think I'm cool anymore or irrelevant or they don't like my content. Therefore, they don't like me. And also my money is going to go downhill now as well. And that's not fun to feel like that. It's really not. And so a lot of people will make fun of influencers like for, you know, being upset if they lose followers, but it really, it does suck. And, and that's why you have to not let your self-worth be attached to that number. And that's super important. And I feel like I'm finally getting to that point where I actually understand that. But when this, I mean, this has been my job as long as I've had it, I've never had a different job. Same. So it's like, it is all I know. And I am such a person who I thrive off of progress and to-do lists. And like, I just love reaching my goals. And so when I feel like things are going downhill, I like to fix things. I'm like, I'm not going to sit around and cry about this, but I'd love to figure out a solution. And for the past two years on Instagram, like, I just feel like I haven't, you know, I'll look at my analytics and it's like, my photos are shown to no one. And I'm like, oh, well, that makes sense why I don't, you know, gain followers. And it's a bummer. And so that's been something that I've really tried to lessen my attachment to as well. Cause I'm like, I, and this is all about focusing on the positives. Like I have the coolest community. I am obsessed with the people who do support me. I think they're the greatest people ever. And so I really try and focus on that instead of being like more, 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 I need more. I just want to cultivate like, you know, an amazing community and just give as much value as possible to the people who already follow me. So that's kind of been my focus lately. That's an amazing answer. I know. It's really, it's, it makes me think about it differently the way you're talking about it. Like, no wonder we all get so upset when we lose followers because it does make you feel like I'm just not relevant anymore. I'm not interesting. I'm not cool. This won't be my job for very much longer. Like these these thoughts will go through your mind no matter how confident you are, no matter how how much you love what you share with the world and the community. But yeah, it's weird. Social media is a weird place. It's it's weird. And it's very, it is so, it, I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there are other jobs like it, but it, I don't know another job off the top of my head that is so connected with your life. Right. Like that's you, an interesting component. You know, for sure. you're sharing your actual life. And while there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes and that people don't know, of course, there's, there's a ton of stuff that goes on behind the scenes, but that's literally your job is to be sharing your life with people. And again, yeah, when things start to go downhill, you're like, oh, people don't think I'm Right. I'm cool anymore at all. This is not fun. It's so it's so interesting. I know. And finding that balance between how much you share and how much not, that's oh, always kind of been a struggle for me. Like I share, I'm at overshare mm-hmm. for sure. And then at times I think, okay, for my mental health, I should share less, but are people still going to be as interested if I'm sharing less and I'm not talking about deep things all the time and I'm not sharing what's on my mind all the time? So it's a really interesting balance to find. And and that's why some people don't 
want to open up on social media, even if they are influencers. I know some influencers that are really private. Like they'll show their outfits and stuff, but they're not really talking I've about deeper never stuff. Been one of those kinds yeah, of people. Yeah, and I feel the same. Like I'm a pretty open book, I'd say. But even with religion and spirituality, I haven't shared as much of that stuff on my Instagram. I've shared more about it on my podcast. For some reason, podcasting, I can just like spill anything. I don't mm-hmm. care. But on my Instagram, I'm a little more private. But because I was saying the reason that people feel like they don't want to share certain things is because you open yourself up to judgment and criticism. So if I'm going to open up on my Instagram about how I feel about my religion or my spirituality, that feels so vulnerable to me, especially in moments when I am more in a vulnerable state with it, where I'm like, what do I believe? Like, do I believe in this or do it? It's like, I'm not going to share about that because then I don't want criticism and judgment when I'm already struggling with something like that, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, but that being said, the more confident and, you know, reassured in yourself you get, I feel like it's easier to share those things because then, you know, comments don't shake you. You're just like, oh, well, this is what I believe in. So yeah, it doesn't matter as much, but yeah, I feel the same. I I feel like I've gotten much more vulnerable like the past two years and I'll just kind of say whatever I want to say. Right. I love that. And I love that you're spending less time on your phone. I think that's so healthy. I had a similar trip where we were in Utah a couple weeks ago, barely looked at my phone. I was so happy. I was like, this is what it's like to just be free in your mind and just get my thoughts back. Yeah. It sounds crazy. It does sound crazy. that's 100% how it felt. So I've been trying to be better about that too. And I noticed you've been reading a lot of books. Mm -hmm. I have been reading. What books have been good lately? Oh gosh, I've been reading so much. I just got done with The Compound Effect, which is like a business book, which I really liked. And it's kind of just about how all of your choices compound and if you, you know, in whichever direction. So if you are making like little, even small, little healthy choices every day, it will compound into something great eventually. Um, even if you're not seeing the results right now and the same can be true with unhealthy habits or self-sabotaging habits. So that was a really good read. I'm trying to think of something else that I've read recently that was, I read The Silent Patient, which is a novel. It's not like a self-help book or anything, but that had me on the edge of my seat. So if someone's looking good? for a, yeah, like a thriller type novel, yeah, that was I a good one. fiction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I've been so impressed. I always see you posting your Kindle, finish this book. Yeah. Finish this. What? <laughs> that is amazing. But that's what happens when you spend less time on your phone. Yeah. You have time to Well, read. that's what people were saying. They're like, how are you reading so fast? And I'm like, unfortunately, this is how much time I used to spend scrolling mindlessly. Right. But now I'll do that for hours reading and I feel so much better. That's so nice. So good for your mental health mm-hmm. and so fun. So what does a day in the life of JC look like? Oh gosh. Every day is so different. Um, I would say I usually wake up, I do a workout of some sort. Um, I've been loving, I have a lot, my workout routine during this whole period of time with quarantine and everything where gyms haven't been open. Cause before this, I was going to the gym like five days a week. So now I haven't been to the gym since February or March, which is crazy. Um, cause I was in such a habit, but I've been doing, some Melissa Wood Health exercises, Tasha Franken. I really like her Pilates exercises. And then I've also been doing some of the sweat app exercises sometimes. So I'll do one of those. I'll usually make an iced chai latte. I'll make some avocado toast or some sort of breakfast. Honestly, I'm still not sick of avocado toast. I literally have it every day. Same. It's my favorite. People are just like, even on my vlogs, they're like, do you eat that every day? I'm like, literally, yes. yes. And I don't know how I'm still not sick of it. Like, it's just such a good combo. I love it so much. And it's like, you can switch up the seasonings if you get bored. So anyway, I make my avocado toast normally. Then I'll either shower or rinse off, do my skincare routine, get ready for the day. And then I just kind of get to work on whatever I have to do. So sometimes I'll have shoot days, shoot Instagram photos, make TikToks. Um, prep for upcoming podcast episodes, record podcast episodes if I need to. And I kind of just do that until like, I just do whatever the workday in- entails until around five or six, usually sometimes later, sometimes earlier. And then usually I'll have dinner with Leif and we will watch a show or I'll read a book. And actually we've been playing pickleball a lot. Have you ever played? No, but I've seen that you've been playing. You have How got similar to go play. is it to tennis? So I've actually never really played tennis, but pickleball 
so I've heard it's much, much easier. Um, it's kind of like almost like a pink, big ping pong paddle. Like it's kind of a big paddle and then it's a wiffle ball type of thing. And you're just, it's like a much smaller That's court. So fun. It's so fun. I'm telling you, it's like a fun exercise. Anyone can play. doesn't matter the, you know, um, skill level. Everyone can kind of hit it over. It's so fun. So that's been a new obsession. We've been playing pickleball at nights a lot. I love that. Um, and it's also one of the only things that's like open around for us to like get outside and do. Right. So we've been doing that. We haven't done it for the last few days because of the air quality hasn't been great. But uh, we've been doing that. And yeah, we'll just like watch a show. I'll read a book. And then I go to bed. That's pretty much a day in my life. Yeah. It sounds like a good good day in the life. Yeah. So are you, you're pretty much plant-based when it comes to food. Yeah. I, I would say I'm like 80% plant-based. So I eat that way most of the time. Like I pretty much don't eat dairy just because it does not, I do not, it doesn't do well with my stomach. Um, meat I'll still eat here and there. Uh, but I love plant-based food. I really do. Like I love eating that way. And I try not to be I was 100% vegan for like a year and a half. And I almost felt weirdly like I, for me personally, with my mentality, I needed to loosen the reins a little bit, which is why I started eating meat a little bit here and there and like salmon and stuff. And now that I don't quote unquote follow a specific diet, I still find myself pretty much eating plant-based, but I kind of just leave it up. Like I don't, I'm not as... Uh, strict, I guess. Right. Myself. That makes sense. Yeah. I can totally relate to that. I've been vegan for many years of my life. Wasn't vegan for a few years. Mm -hmm. I am now, but I definitely know what you mean. When, yeah. it, when you have a lot of rules, like mm -hmm. things can get a little bit, it's not as fun. Yeah. It's like you should just eat away because it makes you feel good and that you actually love it. Exactly. Not because it's like, I absolutely cannot eat meat. Like when I had that thought, I'm like, wait, why? Like I need right. to just eat the way my body wants to eat and the way but I feel really good. And like I said, dairy does not sit well with me. So therefore I pretty much don't eat dairy just because I'm like, I don't want to eat that. I don't want to mm -hmm. feel like that. For so. sure. Yeah. That sounds like a good way to do it. Avocado toast every day. Yes. All the delicious things. We love it. Chai. Mm -hmm. Love. So I'm going to ask you some of the rapid fires. Okay. Ask ready. Everybody who comes on, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh, oh boy. I feel like I'll have a kid in five years. Um, I hope that I've bought my first home. I think that would be a really good goal to have in the next five years. Um, yeah. Buy a nice, cute little house and have a, have a kid. Love it. That's where I see myself. Yes. What's one question that you've never been asked in an interview that you wish you'd been asked? <gasps> oh, this is a hard one. I know. Okay, I'm, I'm going to say this just so we can talk about it a little bit because I don't think we've I've ever been asked this in an interview, but it's something that I always want to talk about is finding a niche. People will always say like, okay, the, que the question is, do you think it's important to find a niche yes, do you? when um, you're trying to become a content creator? So I always want to talk about the subject because it's something that I feel like it was like railed into my brain as like, you have to have a very specific niche. If you want to grow on social media, you have to fi find a specific niche to talk about. And I feel like this, this is my message to the world for someone out there who wants to become a content creator or like, but they have a lot of interests and they're like, they hear that and they're overwhelmed because they're just like, I don't have a specific thing. I like a lot of things. So that's how I feel. I have so many interests and my advice is to number one, focus on a niche audience instead of trying to find a specific niche for yourself. And my other piece of advice is that you are your niche. So no one will share information like you do. No one has your personality. That is ultimately why people will follow along with you is for you. Not because there are a million influencers who share their outfits, but it's like, I only follow a handful of them because, you know, certain ones resonate with me or I love their personality or I love the their photos and the way that they share those outfits. So we're all so special and unique. And I, I just want more people because I, I get that question a lot. A lot of people are like, I really want to do YouTube or this and that, but I just feel like it's so saturated and I don't have a niche. And I just want everyone to know that everyone has something awesome to say and, and just be creative in the way you share things and have a specific audience that you're trying to reach. 
and that will take you further. I totally agree. I love that. Thank yeah, you. that's a good question because that whole niche thing is a very interesting topic. Mm-hmm. Like some people are diehard. You have to have your niche. Like yeah, and that's I, how you grow. I think it can be helpful for sure. But it's like, it depends th- on your interests. Like you're saying, totally. if you're super interested in in one niche subject, then of course. Yeah, your niche is you. And people have even said, when I talk about that on my Instagram, people will say, well, you had a niche. When you started, you did photography. And I'm thinking- yeah, because I was obsessed with photography. It wasn't like, what what should be my niche? It was just right. like, oh, this is literally what I breathe and die at this point. So of course I'm going to be sharing about that. And so whatever that is for you will become your niche. You are your niche. Yeah, that is so true. And I think people like to learn more about who they follow. Like for example, my niche was plant-based food when I first started blogging. But it was so quick that I started to share more of my life because it, there was just so much more fun and there was so much to say. Yeah. Like, oh, but this is what I do on the weekends and this is my family and all totally. this Totally. And people love that. I think so. I agree. Yeah. If you're just there for like the food photo and not to go deep, it's just a different thing. Totally. I like that. Do you know what your sun, rising, and moon signs are? Your astrology. Okay. So I just started paying more attention to this. I actually don't know. So I know I'm a Capricorn. I don't know the other... Okay. I don't know what it's all, yeah. all the verbiage. Mm-hmm. So I am I was born on January 10th. It's my birthday. That's the right answer, right? That's what you're yeah. referring to? Uh, yeah, like yeah, a Capricorn? Of course. Um, but I don't know the specifics. Okay. So I love that stuff. You'll have to send it to me. I you'll need have to, to figure it out. When you get home, if you have your chart or something, because I can include it in the intro it's if you want. It's so interesting to me how... So I literally have not ever looked into astrology or anything like that. Like I didn't even know I was a Capricorn until like two years ago. Really? Yeah. Like I, I feel like never... you were such a Capricorn. Yeah. And I didn't know that about you, but I've been thinking since we've been sitting here, I couldn't wait to get to this question because I knew you were a Capricorn. Really? Because you're very like business oriented. You seem very organized. You stay on track really easily. I'm a Libra, so I'm like an air sign. You're an earth sign. Yeah, I'm an earth sign. And I'm very airy. I don't have any earth in my entire chart, actually. Wow. So people who are Capricorns, I can always kind of pick it out. Capricorns and Virgos, because you guys are so like So Leif is a Virgo. So you guys are earth sign couple. Yeah. And I feel like everything I read too about uh, like a dynamic or a relationship between Capricorn and Virgo is spot on. And it's shocking. Even like his uh, traits, I'm like, what the, that's so spot on. It's wild. And astrology is spot on. Yeah. And they always say that it's a really good match. Like Capricorn and Virgos are really good together. And I'm like, it's true. We're like really get each other. I feel like. Yeah. So, you guys, I think Capricorns and Virgos are pretty similar mm-hmm. with, of course, the differences. A lot of, a lot of the same traits though. Yeah. It's interesting. Wow. I'm going to have to like talk more about that yes. with you because I'm interested in oh, it. Oh, please. We can talk about it for <laughs> days. So you probably then, do you know your human design? No. We'll have to look into that. Okay. okay. I'm ready. That's another fun thing too. Um, who is your inspiration? Oh, wow. You know, this is a cheesy, I feel like it's a very cheesy answer that's very cliche, but my mom is like just my life inspo. She is the best. Uh, she she was pretty much a stay-at-home mom all throughout me growing up, but she always had her little businesses. And I feel like that is a big part of where I get my entrepreneurial spirit and like my belief that I can just kind of do anything and do whatever I want. She, w- you know, would always just have her little, like she sewed purses and would, you know, have this purse business and then she would make cupcakes and have her own little catering business. And she's always been very creative. Um, and she's always still been the best mom who's like so engaged and just attentive, but also having her little businesses and just has really, I mean, both my parents have really, again, let me do my thing and never tried to like stifle my creativity or anything like that. And My mom still is like one of the absolute hardest workers I know. She will, she does not take no for an answer. She will just keep on going. And I'm so grateful that I feel like I've gotten some of that from her. And I just like want to be just like her. Yeah, I love that. It's such a good answer. Are you a night person or a morning person? (sighs) Night. I 
Ooh, I'm trying to change. I'm trying so hard to become a morning person or at least, you know, and if I go to bed early enough, I can be fine with the mornings. But I'm like very specific about my sleep. Like if I do not get the right amount of sleep, when I wake up, I just feel like I can't. I just can't Same. handle life. It's so hard. So I'm definitely a night person. Mm-hmm. So how late do you usually stay up? I would say I've been, so I've been trying for literally months to go to bed earlier. And I would say on a good night, I'll go to bed at like 1030. But a lot of nights I stay up till midnight or a little bit later. Same. 1030 sounds really early to me, but I would love to go to bed at that time. It's perfect. Same. That's like my goal. Mm-hmm. My goal is always 1030. That's a good time. Mm-hmm. Cause then you can still wake up early, but you've gotten plenty of sleep. Mm-hmm. I love it. Okay, so we talked about your favorite workouts. Uh, what is your dream vacation? Ooh, wow. I have a lot. I really, I want to go to Thailand really bad. It looks so amazing. Have you ever been to Bali? Yes, we did our honeymoon in Bali and Bali is like my home. Oh it's my like gosh. My spirit home. I am obsessed with it's Bali. It is literally my favorite place on earth. Like Me too. whenever we've gone, I think three times now. It was actually essentially our honeymoon too, because we did, so we got married in Arizona. We had our honeymoon in Newport Beach, just in California. And we were kind of saving up for like a bigger trip. And then three months or four months after we got married, we went to Bali as kind of our official, maybe honeymoon-ish thing. And it was Leif's first time out of the country. And it just like became such a special spot for us. And every time we go back, we're just like, wait, we don't want to leave ever. I never want to leave. It's, I've gone back by myself. We've gone together a couple times. Ubud is like my home. Yes, it is. I don't even really leave Ubud so when I go now. Beautiful. Have you been to Changu area? Yeah, I do like it So there. we love that mm-hmm. too. It is, yeah, it's the best place. But anyway, that being said, I've heard Thailand is similar-ish and I exactly. really just want to check it out. Yeah, same, for mm-hmm. the same reason. Mm-hmm. And the food there looks so good. And yes. the food in Bali is unbeatable. So I was not expecting the amazing plant-based food they have I know. There. It's so healthy. It's so fresh. Mm-hmm. It's so innovative. It's I'm amazing. Obsessed. Same. If you were a color, what color do you feel best represents your energy? Pink. So of pink. Of course. Of course. I love it. If you had the chance to meet anyone on earth, who would you want to meet? Honestly, the first person that comes to my mind, which is like, this is so not even, I feel like this doesn't even reflect me as a person, but it just keeps coming to my mind is Kim Kardashian. I I had the weirdest feeling you were going to say that. This is so funny. This is so funny. Well, tell tell me why. And then I'll tell you why. I I just want to know what she's like in real life. But the reason I say it's like not even, I don't even really watch Keeping Up With The Kardashians. It's not like I'm like, live and breathe and die by them. So I don't even know why that's my answer, but I really am so curious. She is like such an interesting and multifaceted person to me. And I would just love to actually know like how she would interact in real life. Me too. I think it would be so interesting. Yeah. This is so funny because two nights ago, my husband was interviewing me for my podcast uh-huh. for this special um, 201st episode because that's my Congrats. lucky number. Thank you. And so he asked me, it was this very intricate question, but part of it was, if you could meet three celebrities dead or alive and bring them to this concert with you and then like choose who the concert would be oh my by. Oh this is so intense. I know. So dead or alive. So that's like, okay, even Anyone. harder. Anyone. So I named two people, but then completely blanked, couldn't think of anybody who was famous ever. Ever. And so I'm like sitting here for two minutes, like I can't even think of one person. And then I said, Kim Kardashian. And he was like, really? But I do. I watch the show. I, I really like it. And he's like, come on, anybody dead or alive. And you said Kim Kardashian. And so the whole, so I'm like, well, I think she's so interesting. I would love to know just like you, like she's so multifaceted. Yeah. How would she be if we were just hanging out? And then we finished the episode and I'm like, I feel like I have to re-record that part. And he's like, you should. So we did. And I said something different the second time, which now people who are listening, if they've heard that, they know. That we went back. is hilarious. But she came into my mind for the same reason. I wonder if it's just because she's so famous. So it's like, she's one of the people yeah, that just pops up. You can't forget her when you're thinking of no. like a celebrity. For yeah. sure. She's so interesting to me though. Like the longer I, because I've, I've watched some of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, but not, it's not like I'm watching every week. Like I've watched some episodes, but just all the different businesses she started and also her like uh, interest in like prison reform and stuff. Like I just feel like she's such an interesting 
human. So. She's smart. People can try to hate on her, For but sure. she has four kids. She's in law school. She's built multiple extremely successful businesses. Yeah. Oh, 100%. Mm-hmm. It's like mm-hmm. she obviously has a platform, but she puts action into it. Like for she sure. gets things going for sure. For sure. Yeah. I love that. Um, so what's on the horizon for you? Oh man, I am focused a lot on my podcast right now. I feel like that's kind of the main thing that I've been giving a lot of my energy to recently is the podcast. And I'm not really looking to like start anything new as far as business goes for the next little bit. I'm just kind of trying to uh, nurture and cultivate and elevate the things I already have going on. And then Leif and I are definitely interested in getting into the the prospect of buying a home. So that's kind of something new and exciting. Leif is like trying to convince me so hard to get another dog and I'm just not here for it. I'm like, I can't. I love Lady, but mm-hmm. I can't do another one right now. Two dogs is, is a lot more. It's a lot more. Work, it's more sure. work. Like mm-hmm. we have friends who have two dogs and I said, okay guys, honestly, is it a lot more work or is it kind of just like, oh, they both, you know, eat at the same time. So it's not that big of a deal, stuff like that. And they were like, no, it's a lot more work. And I was like- that's what I said. I'm I'm too, mm-hmm. I can't deal with that right now. So we'll see if he ever wins in the argument, but I, I don't think we're getting another dog. I think we will hopefully buy a house sometime. I don't want to say in the next year, even. We have no idea what the market is doing right now. So we're kind of holding off. And I don't even know where. So a lot of stuff is up in the air. So follow along if you want to want to know what happens, I guess. Fun. I yeah. can't wait to see where you guys end up buying a yes. house. I'm excited. Yes. So tell everybody where they can find you. Okay. So my Instagram is at JC Marie Smith, which is J-A-C-I Marie Smith. And then my YouTube channel is just JC Marie. Same on TikTok, JC Marie Smith. And then my podcast is called What We Said Podcast. Such a good name for a podcast. <gasps> Thank you. It was named yes. after our high school blog. Me and oh, my best really? friend. Yeah. You guys had a blog, t- blog together in high school? Yes. That, that is amazing. That was, and it that was, was the name. tragic, but it was called That's What We Said, and we shortened it to What We Said for our podcast. What was the blog about in high school? It was so, oh my gosh, I need to show you some of the, the entries, but it was like fashion, like what fashion we're loving. Here's like the playlist of songs we like, like just random thoughts. It was very... Very, very random, to be honest. Didn't really have much of a theme. We just, it's kind of like our journal. Right. Yeah. That's so cool though. Yeah. Because I think people who've been blogging since high school slash middle school, all those things, it was our destiny this whole time. 100%. I'm like, the influencer life chose me. Like I I, know. I'm like, I have been doing this kind of stuff forever. Same. When my husband came on the podcast a couple days ago, we were talking about this and I was saying I was blogging. Blogging wasn't a thing, but I was pretty much blogging in fourth grade. Yeah. The moment that I had access to the internet, I was like going in chat rooms and like giving people advice and learning how to change the fonts and make everything all pretty and the colors. And I relate so much. Mm-hmm. I got Facebook. I was always sharing my photography when I was literally 13 years old. Like, yeah. I was so obsessed with it. I would make albums on there and yeah. like comment. Yeah. 100%. When you're the type of person who likes to share their life and create content and photos and make it all look a certain way. It's like, yes. no wonder yeah. it chooses you. I, I love did. that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on. This was so fun. Thank you so much for having me. It's an honor. Of course. Yay. Yay. So good. Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. Isn't JC so much fun to talk to? It was so fun to have her over and to hang out with her and to see her in person and just hang out. She's so positive. She's so optimistic. She's a radiant light. She's super successful. And as we talked about in the podcast, she is such a Capricorn. She's a hard worker. She is, I love her her outlook on her religion and her marriage and everything that she has on their horizon. She is such a go-getter and she's definitely one to keep your eye on. So if you're not already following her, check her out at JC Marie Smith on Instagram. Check out her TikTok talk. It's super fun. Also, thank you to Cured Nutrition for sponsoring the episode Code Blonde for a discount on all of those fabulous CBD products. CBD is the best for insomnia, for sleep, for pain relief, for all the things. Um, 
And lastly, thank you to you guys for listening. If you feel inspired to rate and review the show on iTunes, send me a screenshot to Jordan at thebalancefawn.com and I will send you a free gift. And so happy that you guys are here. So thanks again. You can join our Soul on Fire podcast tribe. Oh, hi, Squeaky on Facebook and come hang. Come say hi on Instagram. I kind of love to do this lately. We're at the very end of the episode. I say something specific and then um, see who kind of reaches out about it. So I love saying at the very end lately, if you're still here at the very end of the episode, send me a message on Instagram and tell me either what your favorite part of the episode was or what your favorite part of any of my TBB episodes are of all time. Or tell me what you would like to request for a future episode because I'm thinking about potentially, potentially, potentially going up to two episodes a week rather than one or at least like six a month. So let me know your thoughts on that. Um, Always like to co-create with you guys. I love you guys so much and I will talk to you soon. Have an amazing soul on fire day. Talk soon. Bye.